Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shalom. All right, we're going to start off with the prayer. Our Father who established Yeshua in the heavens, exalted is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heavens. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our transgressions as we forgive those who transgress against us. And lead us not into evil inclination, but deliver us from outer darkness. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Father, y'all, we come before you right now just thanking you for this day that you have made. We thank right now for y'all. We realize for y'all is you that sit high and look low for y'all. For y'all, we thank right now for just once again for y'all forgiving us of everything for y'all that we know not of for y'all, even things that we uh, think that we may have asked forgiveness of. We ask forgiveness of those things for y'all. For y'all, we thank right now for y'all for just allowing us to be able to have love one for another. As you said in your word, how men may know that we're your disciples. Father, we thank you right now for giving us knowledge, giving us wisdom, giving us understanding, Father, yeah. for yeah, to be able to decipher and to be able to interpret what's going on in this wicked system, Father, yeah. we thank you right now, we realize that the times are changing, we see the signs that you've given, we see the, the tornadoes, the storms, we see all the, the wickedness going on out here, we see all the random shootings and everything that's just getting crazier and crazier, we see the stuff that's uh, misleading people and distracting people on social media and all the the fights and the beefing and all this stuff going on for you. We just thank you right now. And as you begin to keep us, as we see the love of many waxing cold, as your word said, we thank you right now for giving us a heart for you to be able to know that it is you that gives us the ability to do everything that we need to do to get wealth and to have our being. It's the reason that you're the reason that we move and that we live and that we breathe. We thank you right now for the Mashiach right now. We thank you right now for him being obedient all the way unto death. Father, yeah, we don't take life for granted. We thank you right now for us waking up among, upon the land of the living and not the land of the dead. A lot of people didn't wake up this morning. A lot of people didn't make it to this day. We thank you right now for constantly watching over. We thank you right now for watching over our young ones. Watching over the young people, the next generation is out here that they don't be misled by this system that's trying to turn them off. Uh, to the same sex scenario what's going on they're pushing this agenda this gay agenda that's being pushed out here we thank right now for keeping our young men allowing them to be men and not being feminized we thank right now for keeping our young women for allowing them to be women and not being something that the world is trying to turn them into as a whole we thank you right now for just being with us as a whole watching over our mind frame we thank right now for us have a mind to serve you. We thank you for us having a mind not to go astray. We just thank you right now for just giving us knowledge, wisdom, understanding. We thank you for giving us discernment as a whole. We just magnify your name because you're worthy. Yes, Most of all, we lift up the name of your son, Yahushua HaMashiach, and we thank you right now for just constantly being there. We thank the Mashiach for just being our mediator, yes, also sir. just allowing us to be able to come to you for, for paving the way so we, we may be able to come to you and not have to go through man to get to you. Yes, we magnify your name right now because your word we thank right now for not just turning your back on us even when we were in our sins even when we were going the wrong way we thank you right now for just giving us a mind frame for y'all to be able to go out here and accomplish what we need to accomplish we thank for keeping us as things begin to get rough. We thank you we're not in a fairy tale land. We understand that we have to be here when things get rough. You said in your word, unless you had shortened the time, no flesh will be saved. We thank you right now. We realize we're not under this delusion that we're just going to escape everything and, and we're not going to be around. We thank you that as we are around, you begin to equip us with the things we need to be equipped with to be able to make it out here. We thank you right now for just constantly allowing us to stand solid and to stand strong and be able to accomplish the things that need to be accomplished so we can be sustained. We magnify your name right now. We understand that you are our source and everything else around us are just resources. We thank you right now that we don't depend on man. We don't depend on a job. We don't depend on no other outside source except for you. And we magnify your name right now because you're worthy. I thank you right now because there's none like unto you. I'm taking this time out to exalt your name. I thank you right now for just constantly just giving us, the, you know, just a, a mouth to be able to just say thank you. Oh, we, we, yeah. we thank you right now for yes, just everything uh, that you've done. We say to y'all yeah, for everything yes, that you've uh, done in our life. I thank you for everything you've done in my that, life. Oh, yeah. I know a lot of times I haven't been, you know, who you should, who I should be at all times. But I thank you right now that at this time, I'm giving you the praise. At this oh, time, yeah. I'm saying thank you. I'm opening up oh, my, my mouth, let you know that it's to you that I bow. Yes, it's father. to you that I now I now no other king. I now there's no, yes, father. no other deity do I now. I don't worship anything. I don't worship the 
the, the universe or anything like that. I worship you, but I don't worship the universe. I don't worship the stars. I don't worship the moon. I don't worship any other type of thing or system or anything that they put in place that makes us, you know, think that we have to have that in order to make it. I magnify your name and your name alone yes, is God. what I magnify. I just appreciate you right now for just constantly just being here for us when we call yes. on you. I thank you right now for just, just creation in general. Yes, I thank you right now for everything, but y'all yeah, magnify your name yes, right now God. because you you're worthy. worthy. And at the yeah. end of this prayer, I just appreciate you that you keep us away from the Praise fires of you. hell. Keep us away from the lake of fire yeah. and brimstone is what we say. Yeah. We thank for, for giving us a mind mm -hmm. to be able to pull as many out of that fire as we can. And we say this in advance because they don't realize that when they begin to go into sin, when they begin to go the wrong way, when they begin to turn their back, from you and start seeking uh, the universe and start seeking all other types of things and they try to go to these things as a source this is when the problem begins to start yes, we understand Father. that at this point is our adultery and we just magnify your name because we come against those things yes, we don't Father. we don't respect those things we respect you we respect you as the creator and we magnify your name yes, we thank Father. you right now for everything we thank you for a mind frame to meditate on your word yes Father. we come against all forms of weakness all forms of sickness all forms of disease all forms of discomfort everything yes, that's not like you we thank you right now for giving us a heart to forgive others for you we understand that we can't take unforgiveness with us we can't have unforgiveness as we begin to leave and depart from this life we magnify yes, your name father. because you're worthy why well, yeah, i just thank you right now i'm taking this time out to just magnify your name with the fruit of my Hallelujah. lips i magnify your name right Hallelujah. now because you're worthy. Yeah. i thank you right now and i appreciate you yes, right father. now for well, y'all yeah, thank you right now for everything that you've done in the name of son you who shall be we pray so be it Hallelujah. All right, we're back. Shabbat Shalom again, everybody. We're going to be talking about <clears throat> supernatural provisions. We're going to be talking just briefly. I mean, this can go on and on, but what I try to do is pick out a few things on topics so we can revisit later with more stuff uh, to, 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 I guess, to avoid a series unless the most I put it in my heart another time. <laughs> and I will give the other scriptures at those times. But uh Supernatural provisions, you know, it just talks about, uh, you know, uh, basically how the Most High sustained Elijah. You know, I want to get into that. I want to get into the uh, the five loaves and two fish. I want to get into certain things like that and understand the uh, the situation with the widow. You know, all these type of things that go on, understanding that uh, the key thing is knowing that the Most High is the source. Everything else is just a resource. I mean, anything else that's around you, whether it be a job, whether it be something that you're using that supplemental uh, situation, it's just a resource. It's not the source. Because what happens when it's no longer available? What do you turn to then? A resource is not going to be able to help you when it run out. You got to have a source. Just like you have a water system. You have a water system and you have like uh, whatever the main water system is and the water is feeding from that system uh, in a natural sense, that system is the source. Uh, your tank at home and the way that they're giving it to you or whatever you got in your storage tank is just a resource. It's not actually the source. So when it breaks, uh, uh, if it needs to be fed by power, when it's cut out, then you can't get it no more. So you got to figure out how to get to the source. So this is where you get back to people in the old days. They would go uh, get buckets of water. Uh, you have, even in this system, people would have like the big totes and stuff set up for water uh, for emergency reserves, so therefore they can actually have a, a small, still a resource, but it's just a backup resource that you can have. But just remember that everything around you is just resources. If it's not the most high, if you're depending on it to, you know, to sustain you, uh, if it lets you down, what are you going to do? This is why it's so important to know the most high, because when it all boils down, at the end of the day, you know, we only have this one life to live. And a lot of people try to do this YOLO thing, but I, I say that, you know, as long as I'm here, I appreciate the most high for giving me a mind frame to still serve him no matter what goes on. This is what separates righteous from unrighteous. Uh, you know, righteous people can go through things and people see what it is. People, let me look at certain ones, you know, we're not going to really deal with what it be and what religion we're going to talk about in general. You know, people that are righteous uh, of the most high, uh, you know, when you actually see these people, uh, especially when they minister and stuff like that and doing things, you see the people under the under the power of the Most High, the anointing is like there's a certain level. Even I feel it, you know, when I be teaching, there's a certain level of 
uh, of power that I feel that the Most High gives me, you know, bringing things back to my remembrance through the rock and all these things, and it be done because it's the Most High know that the message needs to be getting out and that you need this to actually uh, do what it needs to do and penetrate what it needs to penetrate. But then when that's over, at that moment, you you kind of go back to normal in a sense, not that you start sinning, but you you still a person. And that's the thing. This is why you have to realize that that's the most high. The anointing is, is, is coming from the most high. Anything that's going on that you're doing to get anything, any, anything accomplished is still from the actual source. It's not from you. Like I say, he's just using you, asking to get it out and do what it needs to be, do what needs to be done. Because when you look at this, uh, you still have all kinds of people that's going to be missing, all kinds of people that's going to be getting the word out and doing things. But at the end of the day, uh, some of these people are not even righteous and it's like, and you'll get blessed and all this kind of stuff will happen behind it. But in the end, they're going to say, get the part from me. I never knew you. Your, your work was over nigga because at the same time, that's one job, but you being righteous yourself is a different job. You have to understand that, you know, no matter what's going on, if you actually get yourself in position and you have a heart to help people, that don't mean that all the time you got a heart for the most high like you have people with foundations and functions and all kinds of stuff that don't really have a heart for the most high. They have a heart for humanity. I mean, they have a heart to do things that their, their, their mind is on something else. It's not on the most high, but when your mind on the most high, this is what I'm saying. You can snap back and realize that when everything is over, you know that I know if they stop and shut everything down, I can get in touch with the most high, no matter how I got to do it. You know, we ain't going to get into explaining because that can be mixed and screwed or however you want to put that. But I know I can get in touch with them. Everything stops now. I know I can lock down. I'm talking about just lock down, take the phone, everything. I can get in touch with the most high and something finna shake. But, but everybody can't just say that because they be caught up into uh, your personal, uh, I guess I would say the flesh part, looking at trying to discern and trying to analyze you and all this. None of that stuff doesn't work because at the end of the day, only, you won't have to be able to get in touch with the most high because this stuff is not forever. It's getting crazy out here. And we don't know what to expect from moment to moment. We don't know when uh, they're going to actually pull the plug on a, a whole lot of things that they got going on. You know, I remember during the situation that was happening in 2020 when it was like you can't even go to the store. You know, it's like they shut it down. They had a curfew. All these movies and stuff are telling you something. That's why I like watching a lot of these movies. Some of them that, you know, the series and stuff that be talking about the end time because a lot of them give up ways that they're going to be trying to operate anyway. You have everybody now trying to come against us now. And you have to think about this. Before we go into this, I don't want to keep rent, but I'm going to show you something that when you look at this right here, remember as we get into Elijah, who, who Elijah went to was not, of Yashara, I think this was of Gentile descent, though the widow, if you do your research on it. So I'm just trying to say that when all this boils down, when it, when everything is, is all said and done, you have to realize that it's going to be the most high that actually sustain you. And the way he do it is not going to always be how people think that, you know, that it should be done. So we have to make sure that we realize that it's in him that we move and that we live and breathe and that we have our being, not in anything different. Because when this stuff stops, we have to be able to know how do we get back in touch with the most high. So once again, we're talking about supernatural provisions. Uh, I want to go to, uh, first we want to look at Matthew. We want to look at Matthew chapter 14, starting off at the 15th verse. We're going to talk about the five loaves and the two fish. Uh, Matthew 14, starting off at the 15th verse. <clears throat> Matthew 14 verse 15 and it was e and when it was evening his disciples came to him saying this is a desert place and the time is now past send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food but Yahushua said unto them they need not depart give ye them to eat now pause it now look at what this said I'm trying to show you how now we're talking about the Mashiach you know what I'm saying we're talking about the Mashiach that had to come down they had, they had to they had to come through the Virgin Mary so that he can be uh, able to uh, how how much I say this uh, abide by the laws of humanity and show the power of Yah. So you know he came you know the way we came so he can actually feel what we feel and, and be able to relate to us and be able to deal with things on a level that we should be dealing with things on. 
Uh, this is why when you get to, I'm, I'm not going to get off track, how you get to uh, when the demons came and, and the man that was chained and said, if you came to, uh, to, uh, to torment us before our appointed time. They knew that it wasn't time, but the Mashiach was able to violate whatever spiritual law that said that, that they, it wasn't time yet. He was able to go against that because of the fact that the power that he walked in. So everything is designed and set up so that, so that, you know, it's almost like if you're not strategic, you'll miss the moment. So at this point right here, we're looking at this. It's a dry place. It's a desert place, but it doesn't matter what I'm saying is even in a dry and desert place, the most high is still your choice. This is why I said, don't let them go nowhere. You don't need to go to the stove. Look, here it is right here. Let them sit down and eat, but they like, where's it going to come from? But the thing is, it's the power of Yah. It all comes from whether or not you believe or you do not believe. If you believe, all things are possible, as the words say, to him that believe. It goes back to Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith, that is the substance. That's the substance right there of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It wasn't no food there. It wasn't, it wasn't enough to feed that many people. And the end is going to tell you it was about 5,000 people that were fed. So this is what I'm trying to get back to. Even in a desert place, in a dry place, when it seemed like everything is gone, when it seemed like all hope is lost, the most high can still provide for you. This is why when you see things begin to dry up, when you see, this is something I got to learn. When it's over, it's over. Sometimes when you're in a situation, when you're getting fed from a situation, I'm talking about it could be financially or something you're doing for some type of provisions or whatever it may be, a certain resource you're taking advantage of, when it stops, it don't be so much it's a curse or something bad. Sometimes it stops and he's like, look, I need to show you the next brook that hadn't dried up. You know what I mean? I need to show you the next thing I got. Why are you still trying to reach from this thing? It's over. I mean, what are you doing? Like, it's, it's almost like David, when he was down there fast and it was like, you know, when he was down there on his face, they're like, why do you get up? He said, well, the child dead. You no, know, he's dead. And I don't need to be down there no more. The child is dead. I understand. He already knew what he had done. So he knew it was time to move on. He knew that he had to move on to a different situation. And this is when the Most High began to bring forth the next one, which was Solomon. You know what I mean? So this is, we're talking about David's next child, the one that didn't die. Okay, so now I'm trying to show you that even in the process of when it seemed like everything is over, when it seemed like you don't have another way to get something and, or something has stopped that you were taking advantage of, don't cry over that. You know, after so long, if you see that this isn't coming back, you have to say, okay, look, what is what am I supposed to be doing? Sometimes these things can be allowed to, to push you to move forward. Now, I think about this stuff, you know, just simple things I think about. You know, out working, I think about working in a certain area, weird stuff is happening. I'm like, what's going on here? Then I switch locations. Like, okay, I get it. My time up in this area, I need to kind of maneuver a little bit and pivot a little bit. But you won't know that stuff unless, you know, you have to realize that you can't keep doing the old saying, trying to beat a dead horse. I mean, sometimes you have to give it up. We're talking, we're not talking about things you can't shape, you know, especially when you start dealing with people. Some people you got to be around, certain ones you got to live with, so you got to work with. But even in life, people that you just don't have to, uh, then sometimes you have to deal with them from a distance. Sometimes your shalom is more important than it is the relationship. So you have to realize sometimes it's time to pivot, but you need to know when it's time to pivot. You need to know is that every time is not a time just to pivot. Sometimes it could be you. Sometimes you may need to get yourself situated so you can be in a better position around, you know, even people sometime in general. So it's like we have to look at the whole thing. But back to this right here, even though they didn't see it, he still said, let them eat. But let them eat what? You can keep reading, babe. 17. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them hither to me and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude and they did all eat and were filled and they took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full and they that had eaten were about five thousand men beside women and children now how you do that and see and you see the order of the Mashiach didn't just get the pass it out this is why we have to understand all they say he gave it to his disciples. He broke bread with the disciples and he let the disciples pass it out to him. 
And it's the thing, like a lot of times we, we like to book order and sit and say, well, I could do it, you could do it. The most high don't operate like that. He operates in systems and authority and stuff like that. And, and House of Time does too. He understands system and authority. This is why the demons say, have you came to appoint it before our appointed time? They were chilling. They knew it wasn't time for them to go nowhere yet. But guess what? They had to get out of that end because he, was, he had authority at that point. You know what I'm saying? No matter what was going on. But a lot of times we don't have authority. We so busy let movies and stuff make us scared of these demons and stuff like that. And we sitting there watching all this stuff which shows them to be more powerful. But when you look at the scripture, that was never no witch or devil not more powerful than Yashara. And you know, it, even even uh you know uh the witch of Endo was scared when, when Samuel walked up, she was trembling in her shoes. She was like, Man, you trying to set me up. You know, I would uh it's been an order to get all these witches out. We had total control. This is why I'm saying this this place is gonna be punished where we're at right now. The stuff that they did, I hate to harp on it because I understand clearly. I had a, I have a very clear understanding of what's going to go on. This place will be punished. We talking about Babylon. Where we at right now? You don't get away with this. This is why we can't allow. When I start talking about love and stuff like that, to put us in a fairy tale land, we can't allow love to bring us to some type of mind frame. And I don't even really like to use certain cliches because they can be taken the wrong way. But I'll just put it to you like this. At the end of the day, uh, we talk about, there are certain scriptures in the Bible that talk about bringing punishment upon generation and generation. Now, we got punished, and we were here based on punishment. This is the way the Most High do it. Show you how smooth he is. This is why he say, our heart in whom our heart, and he kept heart in Pharaoh's heart. He said, I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious unto, and I'll have mercy upon whom I'll have mercy uh, upon. So it's like the way the Most High moves is like, we look at righteousness as being unfair sometimes because we judge it from a standpoint of what we think is fair. But righteousness is not fair in the eyes of man. It's fair in the eyes of Yah. So, yeah, we did it. Yes, yeah, our people that got us over here, but guess what? There's no scripture that say that they won't be unpunished. The scripture that I see say they will be punished, and it doesn't matter whether they agree with it or not. It is what it is because a lot of this stuff, people may just stop reading the Bible. If they're going to stop reading the word of Yah, they're going to come up with their own conclusion of what makes it this. And he don't operate like that. Well, he got one, she got one, uh, they got one, everybody got He don't operate like that. That's not how he operates. He may say they get nothing, and I give it all to this one. Why he do that? We don't know why. That's the thing, but we don't have the mind of him. But a lot of us, uh, with our self-righteous mind frame, what we learn from this system, figure out that our judgment is, is better than the most high. So we look at it thinking we got it. But we don't. Believe me when I say this place will be punished. And the only way you can escape is that you're with the most high. And I'm going here because as we go to Elijah, you got to look at it. Ahab has came on the scene and he's married Jezebel. And at this point, things are getting pretty horrible right before he go to the raven. So we're going we're gonna to go to, uh, what are we going next? Uh, 1 Kings 16. We're going to go to 1 Kings chapter 16. Uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, Briefly about, basically, most I was upset at this point <coughs> with Joshua. A lot of wickedness going on. A lot of uh, worshiping of false deities and stuff is going on. And it doesn't get any better because here comes Ahab popping on the scene. And and, and, and he's already going astray, but he has the narrative with his wickedness mix up and marry Jezebel. And so now it's been even getting any worse. So the most high at this point is about to say, look, I'm stopping everything. Y'all ain't getting no rain in that for three and a half years, it's over for the rain. So you're gonna have to figure this out with this wickedness that's going on now, it's over. And so what happens here with this wickedness? Do you think this just continues? Do you think this just keeps, I mean, in your logical mind, do you think, why do you read the word and you think America gets a break? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm trying to get at. It's like an oxymoron, but people don't see that because they're so caught up into what it is that they took advantage of here. But we were only taking advantage of this stuff because the advantage that they take, look at the prison system, do the homework, look at what it took to get to that point. You know, prison is not there to rehabilitate people for, for the most part. It's there as a business. You got to go in there and get rehabilitated and, and, and take advantage of some of these programs that's there when you go in there. It's not nothing set up that's really, they got to fake it to some degree, but they don't force it. It's like, you know, just like when you go to some of these churches, will there be one? So they, they, they it's open for them, but they have to go take advantage. Some of them people are there back and forth for years for the event to get some type of trade, and they stop the fighting and all the craziness that's going on there. So we are. Uh, 16, 29. 
Yeah. Yeah. And in the 30 and 8 year of Asa, king of Yehuda, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Yashra'al. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Yashra'al in Shomer, Samaria 20 and 2 years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of Yahuwah above all that were before him. Now you see this? Look. It say he did evil in the sight of Yahuwah before all that was before him. It ain't talking about no Jezebel right now. It's talking about Ahab. So I'm saying you finna get a recipe for a disaster. Watch this. And it came to pass as it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Yarovah. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead. The son of Nevi that he took to be his woman, Isabel or Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbel, king of Sidonium, which is to say, uh, it must have been. I forgot that we had to look at it. Sidonium, yeah, <laughs> and went and saved Baal and worship him. So basically, you know, it's talking about he was already wicked, but on top of that, you know, him already being wicked, he mixed his wickedness and marries Jezebel, and so now here it is the recipe for disaster because. You already know now what's going on. Uh, it's some it's some super manipulation. He already wicked. Don't take much to manipulate a wicked person, you know, to be to do more evil. So now it is he got her behind him calling shots. You know, saying you know this is what people start talking about. It ain't nothing but a manipulation spirit. This is all it is. Uh, it, it pretty much can mimic whatever you want to mimic concerning witchcraft or manipulation when you start dealing with this. But when you deal with this from this this standpoint, it's a man. This man ain't even righteous. I mean, he got one. You got righteous men that have, you know, because this spirit can go. And when we deal with the spirit, it can go femi uh, female or male. But we're talking right now about his situation, marrying somebody that's already not in the truth already. You know, this person doesn't even, ain't even, you know, uh, concerned about the most high. But here you is going to mix up with them. And now it's all a recipe for disaster. What you got there? All right. 32. And he reared up an altar of Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. So, so he reared up an altar of Baal. Why are you reared up an altar of Baal? Remember in the scripture when he talk about tearing down the high places? They don't, they don't want anything like that being said. It's like when he began to, they begin to tear down these high places, begin to tear down these places where they were making the the children pass through the fire and deal with this this uh this fake deity. I think it was Molech, if I'm not mistaken. And so when you see this right here, you're supposed to be in Yasharal, set up, reigning. But here you is now, setting up an altar bell right after you married Jezebel. It shows you've been manipulated off the jump. And Ahab made an Asherah pole, and Ahab did more to provoke mm. Yahuwah Elohe of Yasharal to anger than all the kings of Yasharal that were before him. <laughs> now look, he say, and I'm saying that because look, once you once you make these Asherah poles, and these altars of these fake deities. Y'all remember Dagon when that when it when it kept, you know, during the during the book of Daniel, when they kept uh cutting off the when the Most High was cutting their hands and, and legs off of this thing, because like Most High don't respect this stuff. This is the thing. And right here, it's like even when you see this right here set up, it's so deep to when you really dig down into this, how this all started. Remember, in the beginning, the most high wanted to be the people's king. The people wanted the king, so they had to go get Saul and make him king. So in this case here, it's like it's already issue nine that we have to deal with man because the fact that y'all didn't want me as a whole, so now we got you. Y'all not going to just deal with him. Listen to me. Y'all going to let him rip a hole. There ain't no y'all because he's doing this out of his heart. You know, he done did a, got an astral pole. It's like he done rebuilt the high places, and he got everything set up that the most high don't want him to set up. He's breaking the commandments right now. There should be no other L before him. I mean, like that. So here it is right here. He's taking matters in his own hand because he got sidetracked. He was already wicked, but now he's been sidetracked, you know, and start worshiping another ditch. So this is where the problem comes in at. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to start off at the 17th chapter of uh, First King. Right. And Eliyahu, the Chief Tishbite, 
who was of the inhabitants of Gelad, said unto Ahab, As Yahuwah Elohe of Yasharal lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of Yahuwah came unto him, saying, Get you hence and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook of Kareb, that is before the Jordan. And it shall be that ye shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Pause it. Let me show you how powerful the Most High is. This is what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say this to be contrary, but I'm going to show some here. Uh, go to Deuteronomy chapter 14. I didn't get that one down. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 14 and look at the uh, 11 verses. Just something I want to point out right quick. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and look at the uh, 11th verse. Very mistaken here. I want to point something out. Now, remember, Elijah's going to be fed by the ravens. Now, he's going to drink from the brook. Uh, look at the 11th verse of 14 and just go all the way to uh, from 11 to 14. Uh, go ahead. All right. Of all clean birds you shall eat. Okay. Mm -hmm. But these are they of which you shall not eat. The eagle, the ossifrage, and the osprey, the glee, the kite, and the vulture after his kind, and every raven after his kind. Had an unclean bird feed Elijah. But you say, why? It's the most high. Because guess what? You know, this is when you can use the scripture that they try to twist when it's done. Because he wasn't eating it. But what I'm trying to say is the most high, you know, by him being almighty and powerful, we can say, I can say in my mind, was he really an unclean bird by the time the most high dealt with him? Like, in, in, my, in my eyes, the most high righteousness supersedes anything that we may be thinking on our mind. Because when you break this down, he ain't eating it, but at the same time, the Most High is using this to feed him. You know what I mean? He's using something that's unclean to bless Elijah. This is why we have to understand when they start talking about the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. You know what I mean? So it's like, no, it's not wrong to take something from somebody that's not living right. You know what I mean? I'm just showing you my understanding of what I read, what I see is because why the raven? You know what I'm saying? Why could it be one of these others? He gave a list of one that wasn't like that. But he did it because he's all powerful. He don't have nothing to prove to man. You got to figure the most how. He ain't trying to figure you out. And that's the reason why we have to get out of our mind. When we get away from our own righteousness, we can understand that the most high doesn't move like, like man want him to move. This is why you have to move according to how the most high wants you to move. He didn't say, go do nothing wicked. But what I am saying is like, stop frowning upon everything and trying to be so judgmental to the point where you're trying to dissect everything all the way down to the core, and you're trying to demonize every move. You can't do that. You'll never be able to maneuver in this system, not in this system, trying to demonize everything and look at everything as being, things become wicked when you make them wicked. This is the thing, like, I'm giving you an example, like, Elijah didn't eat the raven. He said, these things are good to eat, but they're here for a purpose. They're here to do things. They're here to, you know, to, you know, uh, actually keep the ecosystem going. There's a part that they play. And so, okay, in your mind, you're saying, okay, we know that the Most High in his righteousness had to at some point have this animal fit to deal with Elijah. We're not talking about for us reconstruct his DNA, but having what he hadn't just begun to, <clears throat> or just finished eating some dead thing before he bring Elijah the bread. Like we have to think deep, we have to realize that, you know, the Most High is so powerful that these raven could have appeared on the scene. I'm just saying that's the way I, I don't limit it. I don't limit the fact that the most high can bring somebody to knock on my door and hand me a briefcase and say, here, this is for you. You know what I'm saying? I got a message for you. I, because if you don't think like that and have that child type, childlike faith, you think logical. And if you're thinking logical, you're not going to be able to make moves when things get rough, when things get bad, when everything is shut down, when the grid goes down, the power is down, you have no way out. What do you do? You can't go to the store. This is why you have to stop thinking so logical. Quit letting people put you in a box. You don't have to be unrighteous, but you don't have to be in a box. Like, don't get your knowledge from man. Get your knowledge from the Most High and realize that it's him that gives us the power to live and breathe. And, and, and while we have our being and we move as a whole, it's not people. Like, everything that you've seen around you is almost like the matrix. Everything is not really real. It's been created by man. This is why you have to understand how do you sustain when you can't take advantage of these things anymore. This is what I'm trying to get at because we understand that at some point he won't be able to and he'll have to go to the next situation that the Most High puts him in to be able to sustain. So we have to realize that 
you know, everybody is not moving to the same beat that we're moving to all the time. It's like you just have to live your life and stop bashing people so much. You know what I mean, stop trying to come down so heavy on people so much because before we came into knowledge of the truth or to find out the true name and everything, the most high was still with us. It's like it don't mean that you don't share it. I don't fold for anybody, but I definitely don't bash nobody, but I don't shy away. I don't make excuses. I stay I stand on what I stand on, but at the same time, I don't be mad uh feel some type of way because somebody ain't gravitating to what I say I see in the word or what I think I believe. I mean, that's why we have to, to knock it off with all this stuff. One fighting about what they, which feast there is, what, which is the Shabbat. We're in Babylon. Let's keep it real. Half of the stuff, you can't keep it like you said, no way. But people don't want to look at that. They want to be self-righteous and, and judgmental. And so they want to judge you based on which day that you keep it, which way that you do this, which way that you did it. You got the right kind of friend, all this kind of stuff. And doing all that, they missing the point. So you have to realize that at the end of the day, that you done everything that you can do, what happened when you can't do nothing? Now you have to really show your hand. You got to show who you are for real. Your heart has to be showed whether or not you can get in contact with the most high. Now, half of these people can only get in touch with one another. They can't get in touch with the most high. Only get in touch with a keyboard or something, you know, typing on something. That's about it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where it's at. But you have to realize when, when the keyboards and phones are off and all this, can you get in touch with the most high? That's what it all boils down to. And if you can't, then you got to stop being so judgmental. And that's what this is what I'm saying across the board because it's like this is what's going to mess a lot of people up. This, this, they're trying to be so, you know, uh, super, you know, I guess I would say spiritual, super in the word, whatever you want to call it, super knowledgeable to the point where they don't, they don't, they don't even know how to move in the rock. They don't even really know how this thing works. It's like all the things that you're doing to actually make you who you are. And people are saying, what happened when all this disappeared? You can't get in touch with nobody. You can't get on Facebook. Can't get on none of this stuff. And it all goes away. Are you content or will you have some type of withdrawal because you can't get to it or some kind of fit like a child when you take a toy from? Them. You have to be able to know how to withstand when these things are uh, interrupted. Go ahead, babe. We're about to left off there. So he went and did according to the word of Yahuwah, for he went and dwelt by the brook of Kirith. And that is before the yard. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So look what happened. The same man of Yah that the word has to come through to bring the rain back suffered from the plague. You know what I mean? Like when I say suffered, I don't mean suffered like he didn't get a chance to, to pivot, but it affected him. You know what I mean? It, it put him in a position. That's what I'm trying to say. He wasn't able to just keep rolling. This is what I'm saying. Like, we won't escape without the power of the most high, the punishment that's coming upon America. I'm going to say it loud. We won't escape. This is what you have to realize because the order came to him. He said, unless I say so again, excuse me, there'll be no more rain. <clears throat> so this right here showed that even Elijah himself had to actually uh, deal with the consequences. Excuse me. So even Elijah himself had to deal with the consequences of the effect that was coming upon. That's punishment. Punishment. The same thing they said. What do you see different? What do you see people doing? Worshiping one another. What do you see? Who do you think most of these stars and most of these people that a lot of people are praising? These people are idols. These people are idols. And they're, and they're no different than some of these Astros and uh, other, these, these other Molech and all these other ones. It's like they're idols. Uh, Hollywood is another altar. All this stuff is set up so it can actually get you on the wrong track, but you're thinking it's just television or it's just this superstar. What is a superstar? It's an idol. That's it. That's what I'm saying. Like, nobody shouldn't be praised above the most high. It's okay to recognize somebody's talent, but when you start worshiping these people, you start actually feeling like they're like some deity or something. Like, you have people that really, like, we may not look at that in that sense, but there are people that really look at some of these people as, Gods and goddesses. I mean, they look at them like they're actually next level. You know what I mean? It's something like that. And you have to realize these people are human. But when you start to worship these people, and this is the way this whole system is set up, it's got you worshiping something. You have people that worship uh, sport players, what, no matter what sport it is. You, know, you got people worshiping everything. They worship people, and then they think that, okay, this is normal. So all this stuff is a part of it. Everything is gladiator system that was created to keep you distracted. These are the sports, you know what I mean? If you don't know how to snap out of it, 
you can get so caught up into it to keep you so distracted to everything else is going on and you're distracted. This whole system that's set up, the way everything is set up, it'll keep you so distracted to you want to, you won't know that you have to realize that while this stuff is happening, the world is still going on. They're passing laws and doing things that's actually going against what the most high want them to do while you're being entertained. And, and this goes from the television to 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 anything. It's like everything is set up on algorithm. We talked about this before when you talk about something that pops up on the TV. When you scroll for something, you search something, well, that goes in the algorithm right there. When you see it, you know what I mean? You look for, you type in pieces, dominoes pop up. I mean, everything is, is happening to get you. It's, it's a marketing system that's going on, all of it, everything. So, you know, you just have to realize that at the end of all this, you know, when it all stops, what you going to do? Because he didn't escape. He had to still depend on the most high in the midst of everything that was going on. You go ahead. Hey. And the word of Yahuwah came unto him saying, Arise, get ye to Sarpath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. Once again, the most high commanded a widow woman. You look back up there, he commanded the ravens. And so it started off with, and they say the most high is commanding them. It's not that it's happening, you know, it's not that it's happening, you know, on its own. It's, it's through the power of the most high that this is happening. So he arose and went to Sarpath. What is that word? Sorry. I don't know that one either. <laughs> Keep it real. Because <laughs> our Bible switched up a lot of words. You I can look it up. Zarephath. Zarephath, yeah. All right. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray ye, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray you, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, as Yahuwah Elohekai lives, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. So pretty much, pretty much she had got to a point where she had, she had already uh, accepted defeat. She already accepted the fact that she was going to be defeated. So she was able to just go and do what she had to do and leave here. But the point is, <clears throat> when you see this right here, uh, Elijah is going to the next step. The point I'm trying to make when, when I talk about provision is that the brook has dried up. You know, it's over. The ravens ain't coming no more. So now it's time to uh, to go to the next source. And the next source, that the, the next resource that the Most High set up, that's technically a source because it's the Most High doing uh, is that now he's commanded the widow to sustain Elijah. But the widow in order to sustain Elijah has to follow these instructions. She don't just, it don't just happen. She has to be one to do this. And so in her heart, she's already said that she want to do this. Like there's some type of inkling, there's some type of knowing that she have in her heart that the most high given her that she's supposed to be helping Elijah. It's the same thing. You know, it's just, it's the same thing when you look at uh, the Peter and Cornelius situation. When they was actually, when Peter was having a vision, you know, uh, on the rooftop. And at the same time, you know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, paraphrasing this, uh, Cornelius is visited. And so when you see them happen to meet up, it just showed that the Most High already have these people set up. He's already talked to Elijah and he's already kind of touched the widow's heart in a sense, where she knows that he has to be coming away. In a sense, she knows that, you know, in her heart of hearts, she actually have this awareness about her that's, that's supernatural. When she sees Elijah, she doesn't feel threatened or anything. Go ahead, babe. And Elijah, and Elijah said unto her, I did it. Fear not and go and do as you have said, but make there of a little cake first and bring it into me, and I have to make for you and for your son. For thus says Yahuwah Elohe of Yashraal, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that Yahuwah sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. You can go to the next. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spoke by Elijah. Okay. So that, that's why I wanted to look at that. It just shows that uh, it kept going. It's like the Most High created this. You know, he turned this resource into a source in uh and it kept going, you know, it kept going on and on, you know, as long as this was done the most high's way. And so just showing you that even though the most high gave the commandment to Elijah for these things to happen, 
it still affected Elijah. And it's like the most I show us like what's going to happen, like in this day and time where this is all going to go down or uh, they're going to be punished. So he's been putting on people hard to prep. He's been putting on your heart to be somewhere where you can eat your own food, uh, get you some land. Or, or if you don't have a lot of land, you can do it in the house. You can do it, you know, whatever little patch of grass you have, turn it into a garden. It's like you're already being set up to know that at some point, you know, you're going to have to depend on what the knowledge that the Most High has given you to sustain. It's like you have to realize that you won't always be able to, at, at, at the drop of dime, just take advantage of running to the grocery store, you know, to get what you got to have. That's the hard, the harsh reality that a lot of people don't see. I mean, the harsh reality, I think about this all the time, being settled so that I can be able to have stuff from my actual own land rather than trying to uh, have to go somewhere else and get it when I don't have it. And what happens when everything stops? What happens if you don't have an electric car with a gas station set down and you eventually run out of gas? What happens then? You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put it there. And even when you get there, nothing is there because everybody's came and bought it all out up. So you have to realize that everything won't always be the same. You have to think outside of the norm. Think outside of the box. Think about when the grid is down, when you can't get anything, what will you do? Do you have enough food around to sustain you for a month or for a week? You and everybody is there. Most of the time, the answer is no. But we just it's like you just keep rolling and rolling and rolling. And I know I got to get back on track for a lot of this stuff, you know, get more water and uh, get more stuff uh, stocked up to have it. Because at the end of the day, the Most High has given us a different level of knowledge. You know I mean, that we can actually take advantage of certain things, but we won't be able to uh, just keep saying, you know, uh, you know, our prayers and stuff like that. And the Most High keep putting on our heart to do certain things. We're asking Him to to, to sustain us and to bless us. We're not doing that part. You have to realize that at some point when this place goes down, how are you going to maintain? And and we have to realize it's going to be through the Most High. How are you going to protect what you got? A lot of that's going to have to come through banding together with somebody. I mean, you have to realize that you can't just do this on your own. We were an army at one point. And for the most part, if you don't think like that about uniting, then you're going to always be uh, misled and thinking that you can just sustain outside of people. We need one another in order to make it because you need different hands on deck, even for uh, security purposes and things like that. So uh, go to uh, we proper. Yeah, probably eleven twenty-five. Eleven twenty-five. You can go ahead. All right, Proverbs eleven twenty-five. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that waters shall be water also himself. And so that's the thing. So it's almost like, you know, uh, the proverb when it talks about, you know, if you want friends, you must show yourself to be friendly. I mean, so it just showed that, you know, if you're wanting something, then you need to actually do something. You know I mean, it's like nothing from nothing leaves nothing. So kind of self-explanatory. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 1, 12, 14. All right, please ask these 11, chapter 11, verse 1. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you shall find it after many days. All uh, right, and so basically, I mean, I'm just going to these short verses just to go to them. So the same thing. I mean, it's like, you know, pretty much, I mean, just to paraphrase this, uh, just be a blessing to some people. I mean, that's just the best way I can put that. I'm not going to dissect it and give all these different, because people have their own. But my understanding, just be a blessing unto people. Do what the most high is showing your heart to do, uh, you know, to help who you can help in whatever way you can show some type of hospitality. And uh, we're going to go to Luke uh, chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Uh, this would be the one that kind of wraps it up. Yeah, starting off at the uh, 24th verse. All right. Luke 4 and 24. And this is, uh, you know, the Mashiach. Go ahead. And he said, Amen, I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Yashua all in the days of Elijah. 
when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But into none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Sarpheth, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. So that, so he had to do. Like I said, this is what I was saying here was showing that the Most High, you know, he did it that way. You know what I mean? Because most of the time, just like them, people start trying to ostracize the Mashiach. And this is the brother of uh, John, James and and John, you know, they don't want to see, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, people like, well, I know his mama. This, oh yeah, I know his mama. You know his people and his cousin. People want to be coming with you, and since they want to be coming, they don't understand that the Most High has something on you that people can't sometimes just respect because they know you, and so sometimes certain uh, close kindred relationships can actually be a hindrance to the work of the Most High because people. Don't respect the power of the Most High and what He's given you, so they see you as just, even though you are. But at the same time, you know, when it's time to work and put in work for the Most High, that's when the Most High begins to put His super on your natural, and you become to be supernatural to do that what you're supposed to do because the anointing comes upon you. That's the part they don't understand. They saying, okay, this is just said and said, but the Most High, He just, do you see the Mashiach is saying right here, look. Uh, prophets are not, you know, they don't respect you in your own country. And you can narrow that down to your area, where you're from as a whole. They don't really see it, you know, the way that the most high and you see it. They see it from the natural standpoint. So they see you as really nothing. And, you know, not that you want to be more, but the most high is what makes you something. That's why Paul and them was saying, Peter would say, get up, don't worship. I'm a man just like you. But at the same time, they saw something there. These were just random folks, but the ones that you see that uh, close to them sometimes, they're looking at them like, well, who they think they are? You know, it's like that sense, a certain level of jealousy and hatred kicks in because people want to break you down to normal or what they think you should be. So they don't respect it. So that's why I say a prophet won't be respecting his own country. You go ahead to the next one, baby. 27. And many lepers were in Yashua all in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, save in name and the Amorite. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him into the brow of the hill where on their city was built, that they may cast him down headlong. See how that hatred just kicked in? Go ahead. But he passed him through the midst of them, went his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Gal Galilee, mm -hmm. and taught them on the, Shabbat, on the Shabbat. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. See, that says his word was with power. But his word went with his, with his own power, with the power of the Most High. So just showing these things to just uh, you know breaking bread to say that you have to realize that you're going to need supernatural provision. You're going to need to make sure that the Most High is the source, and everything else is just a resource because resources we see they dry up. Even when the Most High appointed these things, they stopped at a certain time. He wants you to go to a next thing. Sometimes jobs play out, cities play out, but people won't see it. Sometimes everybody around you won't see it when the Most High says it's time to get going. Then when doom and gloom come, when something real heavy hits the place, then they say, well, I see why such such in here. Or they may never see it. It may just be your mission to move. And people may not realize this. And, they, and they're not going to grab it because they want to uh, gravitate to the flesh. They want to gravitate to what they like. You know what I mean? The, 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 the flesh part of you. But the Ruach and the Most High, you know, what he put in you is saying, hey, look, I need you to get going. It's time for you to do this and not this. And this go for if you own a job and you made friends with co-workers and stuff like that, and, they're, and they, they're there forever. They're never going to leave. They don't like change. They don't want to pivot at all. And they're going to stay there till it's all over until the people kick them out or until they retire. Well, that may not be your mission. And we have to quit. And when you when you make that your mission, you can't move. When the most I say move, you have made that job your source. That's why, that's why you have to understand that he's not against you having one, but he is against you not moving when he say move he's saying look i know you got this but i want you here i want to put you over here but you can't do it because you you plan out your whole life here because you've met people and and you got comfortable and got familiar but his 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 job now is to see can you be obedient when it's time to be uncomfortable because it's not about being comfortable it's about whether or not you're going to do what he say do when the time coming is not going to feel good change never feels good it's always something different when you change. Even when you grow, it's, it's different. When you grow from a baby to an adult, things get different. Like you go from people catering to you to now, you have to cater to people. It's like things change. You have to be responsible now. So you have to realize that it's not going to stay the same. Like you can't get it like that. Like when the Most High is saying maneuver, 
you have to maneuver. You can't base your life upon people that's around you that you're not obligated to. And even once you think you're obligated to, when you do the work and you do the math and research on it, you're really not to the degree that you think you are that will stop you from doing what the most high say do. Because even at that point, if you're so obligated, then that means that whoever that is able to do what it is that you got to do or follow you there so you can do the mission of the most high or it's just not real. Like you have to click into reality. The most high is calling you to pivot and to maneuver the way he wants you to. Because when the hammer drops down in this place, you really need to be in position. This place won't escape judgment. All I see is more wickedness. The more and more I turn on the news, there's always something crazy going on. And it's just happening more and more. And I and I say, we understand things that happen in other places, but I got to deal with this. I got to deal with this because this place took slavery to a whole nother level. You're dealing with chattel slave. You're dealing with Oh, not just that, the wickedness that they've done. I mean, it's so much stuff that has happened. Uh, you know, you can name it. It goes on and on. You know, Hiroshima. We just name all kind of stuff, man. You know, you have all kind of wickedness that went on, and they're backing up the wrong people. I mean, and the people that they're backing up who they think is Joshua are behind a whole lot of the other wickedness that's going on in the industry here. So just look at this place. You think they're going to escape? They're not. So don't be in a fairytale land and make sure that you make the most high your source and don't have the most high just some afterthought realize that it's going to be him that gives you the information to pivot and to maneuver and that's the end well yeah we thank you right now for just being with us this day we thank you right now for the word that went forth for yeah we thank you right now for just constantly just allowing us to make you our source and yeah. everything else around us is just a resource and we appreciate you as we depart from you this day we thank you for just being with us in the name of your son we pray for your grace and mercy so be it